And good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry about that. Sli starting slightly later than normal today. Um, <clears throat> but uh, here's me from my kitchen to your kitchen at home. And I hope you're all keeping safe and all keeping well there. Um, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A few more people there. Um, we had to start a little bit uh, later this morning. Um, I think I tried to get this Elliot to come and join us as well um, online. And uh, that threw us, a few of us out. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, welcome to um, our lesson here at Talkie Girls Grammar School. Um, uh, if you're watching me from Talkie Girls Grammar School, um, fabulous, great to see you. This is a year seven lesson, start of the rotation. I'm Mr. Man, this is my daughter Millie. Can you say hello Millie? Hi. Hi. Um, Millie's also in year seven as well. Um, and we're gonna be going through some very basic cutting skills today. And then after the cutting skills, we're gonna be looking at making some Afro swans. And if we get time in the lesson also, uh, it is a double lesson. Um, if we get time in the lesson, we're gonna try and make some, as well as apple pies, we're gonna make some apple swans, some little apple swan um, sculptures, which would be quite nice. So we can look at decoration and garnish. Um, so that's how we're planning to do today. Okay, we're up to 14, 15 attendees. Now, um, how this works, if you are watching on YouTube, obviously you can leave the little comments along the bottom. Um, if you're watching this live now at uh, Talking Girls Grammar, um, fabulous. And if you look down the side, I've just put it on the side there, we have a meeting chat down the side of the screen here. Um, and as I'm talking, and as Millie and me are cooking, um, you can put your little comments down the side there and tell us what you're thinking. If you've got any problems, questions, if you want to post little pictures down the side there for the rest of the class, they're all there, ready to go. Sorry, other side, there, down the other side of the screen. And you'll be able to see what we're uh, talking about and I can respond instantly to you. So we've already had a few questions this morning um, for those people that have had the recipes and they've said, uh, we can't find uh, apples, Okay, so we can look at other things that we can do with these ones. So rather than apple berry pies, they do, we can use some other fruit and we don't actually need the apples if we look at other fruit and then we'll show you how you can do that with your pastry. Um, people are saying flour, struggling with flour. Okay, so you can use a multitude of different flours on this one. If it's bread flour, um, that'll be fine. If it's plain flour, that's what we're looking for today. That would be uh, the best of the lot. Um, but if you've got other sorts of flour, message me what you've got, put it down the side, I can work with that. Same with ingredients. We're looking at lockdown larder basic ingredients and we're going to still be able to create an amazing lesson out of that for you. So uh, let's just check everybody's there. 7, 16, 17, 18 uh, of you girls there as well from Talking Girls Grammar. And like I say, if you're watching this uh, live, you can leave the comments down the side. If you're watching this again on YouTube, um, leave your comments down on the bottom and I'll get back to you on that one. We'll also post the uh, ingredients and equipment if you're on YouTube are just under the screen here as well. OK, um, so we I think we're nearly ready to get going. Um, if there are any other questions, can, uh, let's just have a look. We don't need, we've got some new things coming up already. Lauren's here. Miss uh, Elliot is here. Um, fabulous, Miss Elliot. Miss Elliot is joining your year seven class today as well. Um, fabulous. Nice to see you as well. And um, we're up to uh, a good number of people. Now, the few people joining us later, if you're watching us from Talking Girls Grammar, don't forget, um, you can also pause, rewind, play me whenever you want to during today. So I know I've got I've got one person who's um, said down here, uh, you can either publish them, uh, your comments live to everybody or just publish them privately to me, it's fine down the side, um, and I can respond to those. Um, I'm not mentioning any names except for Miss Elliot, we, we're happy to mention Miss Elliot's name, um, but we won't mention any names, I won't be able to see any pictures um, other than those you, photos you pushed down the side there. We've already said, a, we posted about the online rules for all you girls already. Okay, um, we're nearly ready to go and get started. I can just see now everybody's attending. There we are. I have a register up and running. I have comments coming down. We are ready to go. Right, we're ready to go, Millie? Yeah. So before we start, before we start, Millie, we need to go through. This is a first year seven class for you. So it's first in the rota rotation for teaching food here. So we need to go through some basics. All right. Um, now, Millie and me are not ready to cook yet. So we're going to go through the very basics in the kitchen of what you need to do and how you're going to work this one. So I'm just going to show you um, some little step by steps here on the PowerPoint. Um, we have got, uh, if I share this with you, um, we have got uh, our little piece here and I'm going to just put that one. Oops, there we go. Um, here we go. Um, so we, what, we go, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be um, needing to get ready for our lesson. Now getting ready for a lesson is what we call uh, mise en place. OK, mise en place means to get ready. So all of you year sevens, mise en place. It comes from the French word to put in place. Um, that's what mise en place is. And we have a few things we like to remember, and we call that Hattie. Um, so if you look on this one, we, whenever we're getting ready, um, 
That's okay. When we know it's get ready, we're going to be going, getting yourself ready, getting your area ready, and collecting your equipment ready. Okay. Um, so uh, let me just uh, share that with you. Um, so here we go. There we go. Millie just saying we're not. Here we go. Um, this is Hattie. Okay. Um, get your area ready for practical. Get yourself ready and get your um, get get your equipment ready. Okay. So we need to. And this is all about Hattie. Now Hattie stands for something. And we're going to be going through and telling you what that stands for. Here we go. Um, uh, what we're going to be doing is we I'm going to get the minutes just doing that was fabulous. We're going to do that one. Uh, OK, uh, let's get this one up and running for you. Let's say you there we go. That's what it stands for. Mise en place. Um, mise en place to put in place comes from the French. Uh, Hattie, H-A-T-T-I-E. Now, H stands for Hair. You need to take your hair back, or you can wear a hat, or you can, and it also stands for washing your hands. A. Put an apron on. Okay, so we, although you're not at school, I still want you to look at that and put your apron on. T. We need to clean our table with an antibacterial spray. Very important that we make sure that our sides are cleaned down. The next T is for collect a tray to keep all your ingredients together on. I is to collect all those ingredients. And E is to collect all the equipment. OK, so we are going to be going through and doing all of those things for you. So remember that Hattie, H-A-T-T-I-E. All right, so let's go back to back to us and let's go back to what we're going to be doing today. Here we go. Uh, we're back. Right, yes, we're back. Hello. Uh, right, here we go then. So the first one, what was the first one, Millie? Exactly. Now, we not, don't need to necessarily wear a hat today. So, Millie, hair, first of all. I haven't got a lot of it. I'm not I'm too worried. I'm not going to be tying my hair up here, but Millie, you need to get your hair tied up. So, Millie is now going to get her hair tied up. Fabulous. Um, OK, um, now the next thing we need to think of, this is what we call personal hygiene, girls. Um, so we need to make sure that we are properly ready to cook. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might be wondering what those slides are. They're from a uh, package that we buy into called Hodder Dynamic Package. Um, um, girls, uh, later in uh, the term, we'll be using this book, which is the um, Hodder Exploring Food Nutrition for Key Stage 3. It's all part of the same package. And I'll show you how to get access to that one and put that one on there. Right. So you've done that one. You've done your hair. Um, right. You've done your hair. What's the next H stand for? Apron. H. Oh, hands. Hands. We need to wash our hands. OK, so let's make our way over. Now, girls, um, like I said, we're gonna, I know this is, might seem a little bit basic, but it's your first lesson with me doing food. And whether you're um, in the cat, whether you're at home or whether you're in the, my food room with me, we still have to abide by the food, um, food hygiene rules before we start to cook. So um, we're washing our hands. Well done, Millie. That's good. I'm going to wash my hands too. I'm um, over here at the kitchen sink. You need to be washing your hands too. Lots of soap. How many seconds, Millie? 20. 20. How do we know that? How are we going to measure 20 seconds? Happy birthday. Happy birthday twice. The Prime Minister's been telling you loads and we're going to tell you as well. OK, so while we're doing this one, we are washing the normal way. That's good. I've got soap on my hands here, but we need to go in with those nails, both sides. OK, so we're doing both sides. Make, don't forget your thumbs. Make sure you're doing your thumbs as well. Make sure you're doing the back of your hands. OK, and then your wrists. OK, now how we need to make sure we are going all the way around and hot soapy water okay so i'm running the hot soapy water here we're doing the same hands like that hands or can you just put the camera down a little bit millie there we go so everyone can see um we're doing the back of our fingers back of our fingers our thumbs our thumbs our back of our hands there we go um really good wrists make sure we're doing all of that we i need to make sure we are properly cleaning those fingers before we start to cook Thank you very much. You need to do that, Millie. It's great. Just work that one down there. Um, uh, OK, that's it. We just, if you're unsure, go back, do it again. And it should be hot, soapy water. OK, so we make sure we have really hot, soapy water on that one for our hands. If you don't do it for 20 seconds, it's not worth doing at all. So we need to properly make sure we are doing that for 20 seconds. Now, we uh, after um, our hands, and hair, Millie, just check your hair's all good. Your hair's good. Uh, OK, after we've done our hair, hair, hair and hands, um, what's the next one, Millie? Apron. Apron, that's right. So we've got our aprons. You've got yours, I've got mine. Uh, everyone at home, can you go and get your aprons on too, please? So I'm going to do it. Now, the other thing is, when we're doing that one, make sure your sleeves are all rolled up. Millie, you've got sleeves rolled up. We're going to get all of our 
Uh, personal protective equipment on here. Here we go. Oh, let's get mine on as well. So make sure you have all got your aprons on. Now, it's not just going to be keeping um, you safe from the food, but it's also going to make sure that we don't get any contaminants into your food from you. So it's a double whammy. We really may to need to make sure you are uh, clean, neat and tidy and ready to go. Um, there we go. Here we go. Fabulous. Now, if you're watching this in other schools, this does apply to you from other schools watching this at home. Um, we're not just broadcasting to Talkie Girls Grammar so today. If you're watching this on YouTube, we are broadcasting round the world today. Um, and this will be on the, later on to YouTube. Um, some of the schools we're broadcasting to, we saw yesterday. Uh, where are we broadcasting to? Where's one of the furthest places we saw yesterday? Um, where is Mr. Hubbard te uh, teaching? Hello. Malawi. OK, so uh, this is going international, these lessons. We we are teaching these two um, children in Malawi as well, um, right around the world. So um, there we go. All of you still need to do the same sort of things. So we still need to make sure um, our hair's tied back, we've washed our hands and we have got our aprons on and we have got our protective gear. I'm going to wear my chef whites, but um, for the rest of you, you can get your aprons on like Millie. We're nearly ready. Right. Uh, H A. What was the next one? T. T, um, the T. Now we need to make sure, um, oh, wait a minute, H areas as well. We need to make sure area and uh, we need to make sure all of our things are correctly ready to go. So T, um, can anyone remember? Let's go back. Let's go back and see if anyone's forgotten. Uh, send live, there we go. So we have done, just a quick recap. We have got on there, um, we have got, what have we got? Does anyone see? Let's have a look, see if anyone's, there we are. Let's see, you're watching this online. Um, Hair tied back, washing your hands. We've got our aprons on. Tea, we need to make sure, first of all, our table is clean. And uh, we need to get a cloth and wipe down our areas to make sure we are nice and clean. Let's go back to you all here. Uh, there we go. Uh, fab, right, so um, there we go, Millie. Uh, there's the cloth, there's that. We're just gonna wipe down our area that we're working on here. Millie, it's just gonna quickly spray that down um, with the spray on there. We were washing it down. Fabulous, make sure your area is nice and tidy. Can you make sure at home that you have got cleaned your area as well? You've got your spray, you've got your cleaner. You're gonna just give it a good clean down. Make sure your area is nice and tidy before we begin. Very important, especially, we're, hopefully we're gonna be sharing this food with everybody in your family. Um, we wanna make sure the area is nice and tidy. There we are, Millie. If you put those ones away over there, that's great. Get those ones off the surface. So we've got a nice, clean uh, table. So hair. First of all, we've got hair and hands. We've done that. Hair, hands. Um, next one, A. Uh, there we go, A. Um, a is the aprons. T. Uh, okay, so the next T was for tables. Is your table area all nice and clean and tidy? Which it is now. We're happy with that. Um, the next T was for something else. Um, it was long, it was flat, it was for collecting stuff on. Tree. That's right. So let's go back to it again. Uh, so we have got um, H A T T. The so next one is for tray. If you can see that on your screen, we are now going on to tray. Um, so uh, let's go and get yourself a tray, Millie. The reason we do this, we want to make sure your area is nice, neat and tidy and ready to go. We want to make sure you're going to be keeping your space tidy and very much so because you're going to be working at home. This is not like the big wide kitchens we have in the schools. We are going to be using um, this. So we've got ourselves a massive big tray here for today to get all of our equipment on. It's so much so that you can easily say it says this is a tray on it. Um, you know it's a tray. Um, so we need to get all of our ingredients on it. This is our next part of Hattie. OK, so Millie, um, do you know what we need to collect? Let's have a look. Um, let's go and have a look on back to our slides and find out what we do we need to get ready for um, ourselves. Well, um, we need to get some equipment ready. Um, so we need to go and get uh, a chef's knife. Um, we need to get, um, put those on the board there. Um, we need to get um, a chopping board. We've got a mixing bowl, Millie. Have you got a mixing bowl? That's it, well done. Um, have you got a tablespoon and teaspoon? If you're running around the kitchen, go and get these, that's great. Tablespoon, teaspoons, have you got that? Um, uh, that's good, well done Millie, you've got that on the tray. Um, the next thing you need to get is a peeler as well. Oh, this is a bit of a competition, we've got to go and run around the kitchen now. Uh, don't run around kitchens, it shouldn't be running around, we're getting it all prepped in advance, there we go. Uh, peeler, um, a pastry brush, don't need to worry about that if you haven't got one. A pastry cutter, um, we've, we've got pastry cutters, um, fabulous, and a rolling pin really. Well done, okay, I'm gonna go back to us 
and show you where we're up to on this one as if by magic. Uh, let's send that one live to you. Um, we have now got our tra tray. There we go. And there we have it. As if by magic, we have now got our tray with equipment on, all ready to go. Right, we can unload that now onto our work surface, ready to cook. Well done. Uh, we'll get everything ready. Now, if you are missing any equipment, that is absolutely fine. We can always work with that. That's uh, fine. Um, uh, can you see us? No, we can't see you. Uh, we won't be seeing you. That's a good question. Someone's just posted. Uh, are you able to see us? No. Um, we have to think of safeguarding, obviously, for everybody um, who's uh, uh, watching this live. Um, we need to think of safeguarding. We are, cannot see you at all. Um, uh, if you're worried about that, you can always put a sticker or something over the webcam, but we definitely can't see you on this one. All we can see is if you post your pictures down the side. So we just need to think about that one. Uh, so no, we can't see you, uh, but hopefully you can see us. Um, so can you see us I, I would is the question um yes yes it looks like we you can um uh, so anyway uh, it's not working for some people right um uh let me try and do that there we go can i just have a post down the side if anyone can see me there i've got 14 people now uh, 15 watching uh can you see me just post down the side just give me a thumbs up if you can see me uh while we're doing that it looks like we can um there we go Yes, yes, we can. Um, you're here. Uh, can you see? Uh, there we go. Fabulous. Yes, they can see us. Um, right. Uh, so after the tray for um, so H A T T I for ingredients uh, for it, what is the E for then? Um, oh, other way around. I and the E. We've got the I and the E, the ingredients and the equipment the wrong way around. Let's get them around the right way. Let's sort out what we need for ingredients then. Sorry. There we go. Uh, let's sort out ingredients. So let's go down to, we've got E and I the wrong way around there. Um, let's go into and get our ingredients. Um, so that was the equipment. Let's get our ingredients sorted. Ingredients for our apple review pie. We're going to need in our trays, so we've got our tray again. We're going to get some apples on there, a variety of different types of apples. Millie's now running around getting the different apples. Um, we need some vanilla, um, which is, uh, she's just going to get some vanilla there. Brilliant. Um, we've got some uh, strawberries. Oh, we've got some strawberries. Now we've got a variety of different types of strawberries. Um, we've got um, different bits and bits. Yeah, put those on there. Um, we need some flour and some butter. Brilliant. There we go. Good, 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 good. Right. Uh, let's go back to this then. Uh, let's see if everybody's ready. And... We're back. Right, year seven. Um, so we have now got, as if by magic, um, all of our ingredients as well now. So we've got ingredients and equipment are ready to go. So we are set up. We have done what we call our mise en place. We have got our areas ready. OK, um, so let's go and put those on the table now. There we go. Let's put all of those back over there and we're going to get ready to cook um, and we're going to get ready to prepare all of our food. Uh, there we go. Uh, right, fabulous. I'm just going to check we've got any more on there, any more comments. Uh, there we go. Let's get back to that one. Brilliant. Um, yeah, that's fine. We'll put that one down there. All right, um, so, so just having a few more comments come in there and just replying to them. So if you don't want me to reply uh, publicly, I can reply to you privately. And I've just done that to a couple of people there, um, just replying to you to privately. So um, don't worry there if you don't want me to do that one publicly. We can do that one privately and reply to you. All right, uh, next. Um, let's go through and do some cooking. Now we're going to be making some appleberry pies today. Um, what that means is we're going to try and bake an apple pie inside an apple. OK, which sounds a little bit weird, um, but we're going to try and do it. And if you haven't got all the ingredients, we're going to still show you how you can do this one um, without all of the ingredients that we have here. So let me just get you a um, let's get the recipe up for you. Uh, We've got lots of thumbs up. I can see you. Thumbs up. Looking great. Uh, don't have any cooking apples. No, you don't need to worry about those ingredients. Don't worry, year sevens. I'm going to go through and show you what you can do and how we can do it. So let's. this is a good point to get, get the recipe up. Um, and let's get that one up for you so you can see what we're looking at. OK, um, let's see. All right, 
So on the uh, ingredients there, we have got 100 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of margarine. Uh, we've got some, uh, and we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to do our first procedure, which will be cutting in, and then we're going to do some rubbing in. And we're going to combine all those ingredients, like it says in number five. Then we're going to roll it out, and then we're going to slice and scoop some apples, and then we're going to uh, put all those together. Now, the main part today is learning your knife skills. So um, it doesn't matter if you've not got cooking apples. Um, I'll be honest with you, we haven't today either. We're going to look at what larder um, foods you've got, the sort of lockdown larder foods you've got, so what essentials you've got, and I'm going to show you how you can replace things as we are going along. If you've not got plain flour and you've got self-raising flour or you've got bread flour or you've got even got pasta flour, that'll be fine. That'll still work. Now, I've said margarine on here, butter, margarine, um, either either is going to work with this one. We have to work with what ingredients we've got at these uh, di difficult times. We'll see what we can get hold of and we'll work with that one. I still want you to be able to cook and produce some lovely food, though. So it doesn't matter. Someone's just said there, no, I haven't got cooking apples either. No, absolutely fine. We can do this with normal apples and we don't actually need to do um, do this with putting the apple berry pie inside the apple. You can just do this one, making this into a standard little apple pies. So that will be fine as well. And um, what we'll do is we'll go and get uh, like little cake tins out and we'll show you how you can do it with, with that as well. Um, so you don't need to use um, don't need to use the apple as the pie itself. So while you're doing that, just have a quick look at that. If you want to take a quick little picture of that, so you've got it on your phone. So I have sent this um, to you already. Um, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'll keep this one along the bottom as well. I'll put these ingredients, these uh, recipes along the bottom as well. So you've got those ones for you. OK, so please don't worry. So and someone said they've not got a rolling pin. That's fine. I've got an alternative to a rolling pin as well. Um, uh, it, it, we can use that one as well. So don't worry about that one. Um, it doesn't matter that you haven't got, haven't got it. OK, so don't worry if you've not got all of the ingredients. That's that going to be fine. We don't mind. Um, we're going to be OK with that. We'll still be able to work with it. Uh, someone's saying they haven't got corn flour. That's fine. If you haven't got corn flour, I'm going to show you how you can do this with custard powder as well. All right. Um, let's go back to let's get back to you all and show you what we're doing. Uh, let's go. Here we go. All right, you're back. Um, OK, so we're, we're going to be looking at two things today. The first thing we're going to be making pastry. The second thing we're going to be looking at your knife skills. And like I said, this is the very first time you've done this, so this is fine. Um, we're going to work it through step by step. Um, and don't forget, you can pause or rewind me at any point. All right, it's totally up to you. Um, so if you think I'm going too fast, just, just do that for me, OK? Now, we're going to make a pastry. Really. OK, now to make a pastry, we need two ingredients. Any idea what those two ingredients are? Butter and flour. Butter and flour. You're going to have to speak up for the camera. Turn everyone on the camera. Butter and flour. Butter and flour. So we're going to be making a pastry. OK, so I'm just going to write it on the board here. Pastry and we're going to be making um, pastry. Can you see that one up there? There we go. That's better. Now you can see it behind us. Um, pastry. Um, we are going to be using butter and flour. Butter and flour. Now, the key here when you're making the pastry, because some of you might not have scales at home. Yep, someone's just said they don't have scales at home. That's fine. If you don't have scales at home, is that we need to do, um, well, you tell, tell me, uh, how much butter for how much flour? If I'm doing, um, say, uh, 150 grams of flour, can you remember how much butter we might need to do that? 150 grams of flour. No. If you're doing 150, have a guess. We need to do half it. 75. Yes, it's 75. Uh, there we go. So if you were doing 100 grams, you'd need to do how much butter? 50. 50 grams. OK, we, what we're making today is a pastry called a short crust pastry. Short crust. Now with this one, you use half the butter to flour. OK, so we're using half the butter to flour on this one. It's a short crust. Now, yesterday we did with the year nines, we did a different sort of pastry. Can you remember what sort of pastry that was? A rough 
and we did a rough puff and puff pastry. If you want to watch that, it's on YouTube, as this will be um, later on today. Um, you can watch the, the year nine lesson if you want, and we did uh, puff and rough puff pastries. And there, with a different sort of pastry, we did different amounts. So if we were doing 100 grams of flour, we'd do a... Uh, 100 grams of butter, yeah. With the, with the puff pastry, you do different amounts, but with the one we're doing today, short crust pastry, we are gonna do um, whatever you do with flour, we do half that of butter. Now, um, I don't know how many pies you want to make. Uh, it depends on how many people, sorry, I'm going to wash my hands there. Uh, I've got some antibiotic gel there, sorry, touch my nose. There we go. Um, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if you want to make loads of these ones. Um, if you are, we're just going to use that rule. All right. Now, if you've not got scales, how are we going to do this one? Millie, let's say we want to do 150 grams. Uh, do you want to tell all the listeners at home how you can do um, measure out 50 grams of flour at a time? Three handfuls. Of yeah, flour. 150 grams would be three handfuls. So each handful is about how many grams of flour? 50. About 50, yeah. So we, uh, we're not at school today, um, so I'm going to let you get away with this one. So we're going to do three big handfuls of flour, which is around about 150 grams of flour. You can put a bit more in there. Yeah. Uh, OK, so we got 150 grams of flour into our bowl. OK, that's that's good. Now, as well as the 150 grams of flour, and we should show everyone 150 grams of flour. There we go, 150 grams of flour. We need to put some fat in there. Now, it doesn't matter, like I say, if you've not got, um, there we go, move the camera down so I can see you. There we go, we can all see you now on the same height. Um, we've just got some butter here from, uh, we've had to get it from our milkman. Um, it's a bit different at the moment, um, but we're gonna be doing that one. So we're gonna be measuring out. Now, the good thing is if you're using butter from home, let's use a rounded butter knife. If you're using butter from home, it often says the measurements down the outside. So it'll actually tell you whether you're on 50 grams, 150 um, and so on. Or if you've got scales, Brilliant, measure it out um, exactly. So we put 150 grams, so how much butter do we need to put in there? 75. That's right. So if you're putting 100 grams of flour in there, how much butter do you need to put in there? 75, no, uh, 50. 50, there I'm Maths, we are the practical application of maths here in food. Um, so we're now gonna put in there um, half of that um, in there. So here we go, Millie, um, there is your butter. Um, you need to put in there, into your butter, into there. We just cut, measured that one out. Right. We're now going to get make our pastry before we get onto our cutting skills with our spend, um, fruit. We're going to make our pastry. So we've got flour in here and butter. Agreed? Yeah. OK, we need to do a very technical skill here now, everybody. We are going to do a technical skill known as cutting in. OK, any idea what that involves? Cutting it. Yeah. It does. It involves cutting in. Um, so you're going to need your rounded butter knife. Um, so if you've got the sort of thing you might spread butter with on your toast. And we are going to cut up this butter teeny tiny small. OK, uh, teeny tiny small. All right. So Millie's going to do this one for you and I'm going to explain what we're doing while we're going on there. So um, year sevens, we are going to be cutting this butter up teeny tiny small. And this is the process we call cutting in. Now, uh, why? Wouldn't we uh, just get our fingers in there straight away? Because it might warp the butter. Absolutely. Um, think about what ingredients you've got in there already. Um, we've got butter and flour and your fingers are hot. OK, your body is hot uh, and warm. And if you get your fingers in there straight away, you are going to end up melting all of that butter and uh, all over the flour and your pastry just isn't going to work. And same as if you try to do it with oil, make the pastry with oil, it's just not going to work as well. All right. So we are going to try and just cut it up teeny tiny small with a knife and not get our fingers in there straight away. We need to keep that butter or margarine or whatever you're using for fat. We need to make sure that is that is really, really cold up until the point when we cook it. All right. So that's what we are going to be doing here. We're cutting it up really, really small. Now, how small? do we need to cut it up? Well, we need to cut it up, Millie, about as small as if you were, um, you eat rabbit poos? No. No? Oh, you don't eat rabbit poos. Uh, do you eat uh, raisins or sultanas? Yes. Okay, so she eats raisins or sultanas. Um, if you eat rabbit poos at home, um, you're doing about the same size as a rabbit poo, um, or if it's uh, with Millie here, we're doing raisins or sultanas. So you need to cut that up teeny tiny small, so it's the same as that one. Right. Um, now, little tip for you here. If you're not sure whether you've cut it all the pieces up and you've made them really teeny tiny small, then you can give your bowl a little tap on the work surface. 
Perfect, Millie. And what's going to happen? All oh, the big bits go to the top. That's right. If you give it a little tap like that, like Millie's just said, all the, the um, big bits will come to the top and you can see if you've got any more bits you need to cut down and make teeny tiny small. All right. Um, so that is what Millie's doing now. She's going to finish off cutting them up teeny tiny small. Have you got rabbit poos? Well, size. Yeah. Size of, yes, size of rabbit poos. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we have got those ones teeny tiny small um, and we've done the process of cutting in. Um, now, the next stage, we do need to get our fingers in, but we need before we do that, we need to use the very ends of our fingers. We need to use our pinchy fingers. Many pinchy fingers, we are using the very, very ends of our fingertips. The reason why, again, your hands are very warm and we need to make sure that they don't break down uh, the butter and melt it. So what we need to do is just break it into smaller bits, but not melting it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get our fingertips into, the, into there and we're going to very lightly very quickly, we're going to lift and tickle these pieces. We're going to do a process of called rubbing in. Why is it called rubbing in, Billy? Because you rub it in. Because we rub it in, absolutely. So we're going to be lifting these up and we're going to be lifting and tickling and we're rubbing them in just as Millie is doing right now. Now, we're doing something else as well. This is a GCSE term, okay? What we are doing is we are getting air into our food and the term we are looking for, do you remember the term when you get air into food? Air aeration that's right it's aeration we are going to be aerating our food we're going to get some air into it as well so we're going to lift and tickle and we're going to because we want a lovely light crumbly short crust pastry going on here so we millie at the moment is now lifting and tickling those little bits of butter into the flour and you should be doing that at home right now as well as high as you can go millie that's better, that higher, 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 higher. Yes, that's it. Uh, if you think of Frozen, we want our own little private snowstorm here. If you think of Olaf and his uh, private snowstorm, that is what we are looking for here. We're getting our fingers in, we're lifting and tickling it. Not all over me, really. Uh, lifting and tickling it all over the world. Not all over the world, so it's all over the bowl. Um, so we got a lovely aerated mixture here there. So that is our um, the start of our pastry there. So um, we can get that in the oven now, can't we? No. No? Is that not a good enough pastry to go in the oven? Because it's all crumbly. It's all crumbly. She's right. It's all crumbly. So what we need to do now is we need to glue it all together. OK, um, so do you want to go and get a, a tub of glue for me? No. Uh, no? No. OK, Millie's not going to put glue in it. Um, what we need to do then is we need to make some glue to go in there. Now, Anyone there at home ever done paper mache when you were in primary school? Um, so last year when you did that, you ever done that with newspaper and you got it around a balloon and you may have dunked the newspaper in a bowl full of flour and water. Have you ever done anyone done that? Uh, yes, I've got a thumbs up there. Someone's done that. Brilliant. So what we're doing is, is very similar. We are going to create that same paste that glue, but we're not actually going to put glue in there. We are going to use something else. What's that something else, Millie? Water. water. Now, we are. We're going to use water and we're going to use a tablespoon. So, Millie's put some water into a jug. Whoa, not just yet. We're going to put, we're going to put water into uh, the bowl, um, but we're going to put it in very, very gradually. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create that same gluey paste. But we don't want it to be as watery as it would be if you're doing paper mache. We just want to glue all of those little bits together. That gluing in cookery terms is what we call binding. So we are going to bind all of those little bits together into a nice big dough ball, a pastry dough ball, a short crust pastry dough ball. Now to do that, we need to add the liquid, but we need to add it gradually, very slowly. I'll say that again, we need to add it gradually, very slowly. So you're going to use a tablespoon and we're going to pour a little bit of water in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What sort of water is it? Is that boiling water? No. No. What sort of water is it? Cold. Cold water. Why is it cold water? Because otherwise the butter will melt. That's right. Otherwise the butter will melt. She knows exactly what she's talking about here. The butter is going to melt. So we need to do this gradually with freezing cold water. So if I put one in, maybe do two. OK, right. Do you want to stir that together with a knife? We're going to get our butter knife out, not our fingers, but stir it with the butter knife. So not our fingers, butter knife. And we're going to stir all of that together. 
Uh, okay, I'm just going to we just had some more comments coming in. I mean, while Millie's doing that, let me just have a look at what comments we've got coming in. Uh, uh, that's fine. Pairs, yes. Um, someone said, can I do this with pairs? Absolutely. Pairs would be perfect. Uh, a pair of perfect pairs would be wonderful um, for this one. Um, so when we come to cutting in a moment, let's get your pastry done first. Uh, when we come to cutting, pairs will be perfect way forward. All right. So, um, is that all together in one big dough ball? No. No. But is it starting to get together? Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to get there now. So what we'll do with our spoon and with our water, we're just going to pour in a little bit of extra into there. Fabulous. We did another one. Wonderful. All right. So not fingers, but um, we're using that knife again. So Millie's just going to stir all of those together into the into the bowl there and just get it all binding together. Now, short crust pastry. It gets its name from the process that we're doing. That cutting in and that rubbing in, those two processes are making the butter teeny tiny short, okay, and covering all of our flour. And that process is called shortening. You've got two GCSE terms in today, aeration and shortening. Um, so shortening is when we make the butter teeny tiny small to cover all those little bits of flour. And that will is going to give us a really crisp, crumbly pastry. OK, a lovely crisp, crumbly pastry. Um, so um, oh, somebody just just uh, pinged in there. Let's have a look there. Yep. Um, OK, so if you put a little bit too much water in, it's your first time in the food lesson. That's absolutely fine. Uh, if you have put a little bit too much water in, that's a good question. What are you going to do? We're going to add a little bit more flour into this one. OK, but try and be very careful when doing it. Little spoonful at a time. OK, then uh, have a look. And if you but if it's not come together into a ball, we'll just add a couple of bit, little bits more. But we want to be do it, do it a little time. So it looks like Millie going to do a couple more, are you? Yeah. OK. Can you remember how many grams of flour we put into there? 150. And can you remember how much grams of butter we put in there? 75. OK, and how many spoonfuls of water we now put in there? Six. I think it's six too. If we're wrong, we just post it down the side here. But I think that was six tablespoons so far, which is about kind of where we need to be for binding this all together. Uh, and what you'll start to see, um, as you start to press the knife against the side of the bowl, bowl as you stir this, it's going to come together into a beautiful dough ball. Um, so what we've got here is it's starting to get there. I'm going to just put a little bit of dash more water in there, and I think that'll be that'll be our last bit done. Okay. Yeah, that looks like it's it's just done there now. Um, it's starting to come together. If I just if I just take over here, okay, um, fabulous. There we go. You can see now. Oh, good idea. We'll do that. Uh, it's getting your sun's gonna be a bit light there. Let's do that one. Here we go. Just change the lights on there for everybody. Um, you can just about see we've got a nice big dough ball going on there. I'm just going to stir that one more time. You okay there, Millie? Yeah. Fabulous. All right. Can you see there? We've got a big double. Do you want to switch that one off? There we go. Oops. There we go. You might see that better. There we go. Can you see that massive, big, old oh, Millie? Yes, yeah, perfect, Millie. Yeah, you can see it better. Massive, big dough ball going on in the middle there. So uh, we have got our dough, our short crust dough. There we go, everybody. We got our short crust dough going on inside our bowl. Um, it's in there now. I can just get it last there. I'm going to get my fingers together very lightly, remember, because I don't want to melt the butter. That's right. I don't want to melt the butter. I'm just going to very lightly squeeze that ball into one big dough ball in the middle. Very lightly. Squidge and squeeze up together. OK, now I have got my dough ball there um, and I'm just going to very lightly put that. Now we need to make sure that, that butter inside there is going to stay really, really cold. So where can we put it in the kitchen? It's really cold. Right. Absolutely. So what we've got here is we've got some a little bit of greaseproof paper, but if you haven't got greaseproof paper, you can wrap it in a bit of kitchen um, roll, a bit of clean film, whatever you've got around um, by you. Um, we don't want the flavours from the fridge to get into it, but we want to keep that cool. So we're just going to put a bit of greaseproof paper. We're going to wrap that up in the greaseproof paper. There we go. Are you going to go and put that in the fridge? There we go. She's just going to put that in the fridge for, for us. There we go. Oops, so it's gone. Oh, there she is. I'm just going to put that in the fridge um, and we're going to wait for that to cool down. Right. Welcome back. That is making a short crust pastry. There it is. Short crust pastry. You can just about see it on there. Let me just turn that one on there. You can see that one. There we go. Uh, short crust pastry up there. And um, that's what we've done already. That's now going to chill. That's going to rest. 
it's going to relax. It's going to make sure we've got a beautiful pastry. So that is in the fridge now. OK, we can now move on to the next stage. And the next stage is our fruit stage, our cutting stage. OK, um, so we are going to need to make sure we have got um, some knives for this one. Now, before we do this, it's your first lesson in year sevens. So we need to do some knife safety. Um, OK, so we're going to do that one. Let me just go quickly clean our board. Uh, there we go. Right. All right. Now, knife safety. Um, this is a knife. OK, uh, chef's knife, kitchen knife, um, uh, and we've got different sorts of knives. So we've got this sort of larger one. We've got the smaller one, which is like a, a pairing type knife um, there as well. Um, and you're going to be going to be using those. I'm going to have a go with the kitchen chef's knife. And so you can see things a little bit easier. Minnie's going to go with the pairing knife. But before we do that, we need to go through some knife safety. OK, um, so let's let's do that one right away. Um, Minnie, do you want to turn the camera? Oops, we just turn the camera around there. OK, to the kitchen. I'm going to come around. I'm going to do some knife safety with you on this one. Um, right, knives. So um, you, when you are carrying a knife, uh, you do not carry a knife like that. OK, you do not carry it like that. You do not carry it um, like that, 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 that. When you carry a knife, you always carry the knife <laughs> Um, down beside you like a soldier um, and you carry it like that with the blades behind you to the point of the floor. Can you all see that one? Excellent. So that is how you carry a knife to, to your workstation. That is all. Um, knives, you don't carry more than one knife. Only carry one knife at a time. OK, so that's it. Just one knife at a time to um, when you're carrying that, the knives. Right. The next thing you need to think about um, is not only carrying the knife, but for what you should do um, when you get it to your workstation. So once you carry your knife to your workstation, wherever you're going to be working today um, on the surface, um, you need to be ch you're chopping on something. So we need to be chopping on a board. So we've got a chopping board here, different sorts of chopping boards for different things, different colour chopping boards we use at school, but we need to be chopping onto a suitable work surface. So we're going to be chopping onto a work surface here. Um, when you're not using your knife, can you put your knife? Oh, there we go. We're just going to move that back a bit. Um, when you're not using the knife, can you make sure your knife is put at the end of your work area so it is safe and it's not going to fall off on anybody's feet? OK, so we want to make sure that, that is well out of everybody's way. Um, and if you can see where I just put it there, I just put my knife is there at the end of my workstation. All right, so it's not going to fall on anyone. It's not going to hurt anyone. OK, so make sure you have got your knife um, put somewhere safe. All right, the next thing is when you come to washing up. OK, when you come to washing up, um, you want to make sure your knife is the first thing you wash up. And when you're washing with your knife, you do not want to be using a dishcloth and uh, going, um, putting it, washing it, the blade with the knife like that. You want to use a brush or uh, and brush away from the knife. OK, so brush away and never, ever, 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 ever drop the knife into the washing up bowl. OK, um, if you do that, it's going to really, really hurt if you need to go and collect it. OK, so keep hold of your knife and when you're washing it up, you use a dish, you use a brush um, and you brush away from the, the knife and turn it around, brush the other way. Then put it um, to drain on your draining board um, at the back and let it drip dry. Don't be tempted to get with a dishcloth and try and dry the knife because that can go through the dishcloth and through uh, to you. So be very careful with knives. Um, so we've talked about carrying them, what you use them on, OK? Um, where you store them when, you, when you're not using them, so at the end of your chopping board there. And we talked about washing up your knives. OK, so remember your knife um, safety when you're doing this one. Um, now, we need to make sure that you are happy at home with this one. And like I said on the disclaimer right at the very beginning, you need to make sure a grown up knows what you're doing and they're happy in the situation that you're doing it in anyway. So you probably find you have got some grown ups with you, especially if it's your first time. If you are unsure on anything when cutting a knife, stop and don't do it. Let the grown up who's with you um, do that with you. All right. So it's important. Um, I'm obviously a grown up. 
um, with you. Um, uh, so I can help out with that. So just make sure, and obviously in the classroom, I'd be there with you helping you out. I can't be with you to stop you doing anything that I that you might be doing by accident. So just make sure you've got a grown up with you know, so you're knowing what you're doing, where you're doing it. It's being done in a safe environment, an environment where your, your grown ups know what you are going to do. OK, uh, so that is your bit of knife safety. The next thing we think about is how we chop with a knife. So there are two methods that we use to chop with a knife. Are there many? Yeah. OK, so let's let's go through this one. The first method, come over here a minute. Let's do that one. OK, um, so um, the first method we use for chopping is going to be this method. Now, this is uh, what, Millie? The bridge. This is a bridge. Absolutely. We have got a bridge here. And what happens with the bridge? The knife goes through the bridge. OK, and we chop down. OK, so we use our thumb. Thumb is the furthest apart from our fingers and we put our food held in the middle air and we chop down. OK, that is what we call the bridge cut. Um, so if I was to do this one, let's grab an apple. If I was to grab an apple, we would go put the apple in the middle, then we put the knife through and we chop. Okay. That is what we call the bridge. That is the bridge. Bridge. Um, the next one we're going to do is we're going to do something called this. Arr. Arr. What is it, Millie? Claw. Claw. Arr. Claw. Okay. Now, to do the claw, we need to do something specific. Can you all do this for me? Put your just do this all at home as well. You can put your thumb right back. That's it, Millie. Push your fingers over the top. All right. Um, so uh, that is a claw. That is not a claw. Push the thumb right back, fingers over the top, and that's a claw. With your thumb hidden underneath your fingers, that claw then forms a resting point for your knife. This is your knife. We put the blunt side of your knife, not the sharp side, the blunt side of your knife, that's the elongated flat and wider end of the knife. We put that against your um, claw, and we cut away from your fingers, always cutting away from your fingers. So if I do that on the side angle, so you can see there, um, we are cutting away from the fingers like that. I've got the blunt side against my metal fingers, and I'm now going to brush away. It's not a metal thing, it's a ring. Um, I'm now going to brush away there. So we have got a bridge and a claw. OK, Millie, let's do a bit of quiz here on this one. So this is a bridge. Claw, bridge, claw, down. No, 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 that is not a claw, okay? That is a thumb, out, fingers in, there we go. That is a claw, claw. bridge, claw, bridge, 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 claw, bridge. Absolutely, we got a clue. We've got bridges and we got claws. OK, um, now the reason that we don't uh, have our thumbs out, if we had our thumbs out and we were going chop, 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 you can see you're going to end up slicing the end of your thumb off. That is why we always have it on the end there. All right, bridge and claw explained, a little bit of knife safety explained for you. Now it's time to cut up our fruit. OK, so we're going to go through this step by step. Now, if you are unhappy and unsure, stop. Get a grown up involved and that's fine. Alternatively, um, I'm going to show you some other safer ways where we can use this fork da -da -da -da, as a bridge and a claw as well. So you'll notice on a fork you have got one, two, three bridges already. Can you see that on there? There is already on there. Um, one, two, three. Um, and we can use that one if we need to as our bridge and we can put our knife through that and cut down like a bridge and we can also use it as a claw look there we go a claw and we can cut like our fingers would do we can cut away as we would do with our fingers and it can form a claw so a fork is a very good alternative to your fingers if you're trying this for the first time and you don't feel confident all right are we ready Millie yeah she's got a small knife a paring knife I've got a chef's or a kitchen knife um we are going to have a go at some chopping okay uh so uh Apples or pears, okay. If you've got eating apples, 
at this point, this is what we're going to be using. So we're going to, we've got some eating apples, haven't we? Um, so we have some eating apples here. We're going to have a go with those. Um, if you've not got an eating apple, you can use a pear, which is going to be absolutely fine. Um, you can use that one. Uh, we got any, any, any other questions down the side there of things that people are using today? No, no, we haven't. So apples or pears looks like the way forward with this one. Um, but either of those ones would work really, really nicely inside your, your pies here. OK, that's it. Let's turn down the camera so everyone can see what we're up to. All right. OK, so uh, can you see me? Yes, you can. Just about. Um, we have got our apples. Now we're going to start with um, the bridge. OK, so what we're going to do here is we are going to hold our apple. So it's not going to roll. It's flat up. Can you see that, Millie? You also got the same? Yeah. And we're going to use a bridge and we're going to cut down either side of the stalk. So here we go. We're going to cut down either side. Just slice it gently, slowly, no rush here, down. Now, if you've just seen that one, I'm just going to show you, take it up to the camera so you can see. So I've done a bridge. And I've gone down one side of the stalk. Can you see that, everybody at home? OK. Now I'm going to take that flat side and I'm going to put it flat down onto my work surface. Now I'm going to do the same with the other side. So I've got a bridge and I'm going to put it through and I'm going to cut down the other side. Are you going to do the same, Millie? Yeah. OK. And I'm going to slice down that so we've got the other side of the stalk cut down. OK, so you've now got two halves there. OK, um, now you that is a good way of cutting up our apples into tiny, tiny pieces. Now I'm going to keep the skin on, but if you don't like the skin on your, yours, that's absolutely fine. But what we've got with the skin on there, we've got added fibre into there. Some people before haven't. So we have said in the instructions, if you wanted to, you can peel the peel it first, peel the apple first and um, that would be fine. Um, and do the same thing with the apple. We're going to keep the skins on because I like the skins in, in my pies. If you don't, then use a peeler and we'll do, do the same same situation. Sorry? Peel one. We'll peel one? Yeah, okay, we'll peel one so we show everyone what, what we're going to do. So if you're peeling, um, you can use your peeler. Remember, peelers are very sharp as well. They've got little blades on there as well. So same, similar sort of rules to the knife. We could just peel our apple. So I'm just going to peel the apple very quickly on there. And we could, but the cutting method will be exactly the same. What we're going to do is we're still going to start with a bridge and then we're going to go with a claw. So there we go. Let's um, peel that. And you can do that with the pear as well if you want to. OK, so exactly the same if you wanted to do that with or without the skin. And we're going to have lots of bits of apple to play with today. OK, so I've got my peeled apple. Same situation as before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the apple on there. And I'm going to go down one side. And then I'm going to go down the other side of the stalk. OK, and then I've got one half and then I've got the other half. They're both there and ready to go. You can see that one there on those. Um, now, the final bit of the apple, you can do this with your final middle bit of your apple. Um, we're then going to slice down with our bridge again. We're going to slice down either side of the stalk. So if I can show that on the camera, I'm going to slice down with a bridge. I'm going to slice, be slicing down one side and then the other side of that one side and then the other side. But I'm going to do it with a bridge holding around the middle, flat on the board. You can see that one there, one side and then the other side. What I'm left with is a cord apple. Cord blimey. There we go. That is the middle part which we are not going to be using today and we can go and put that in the compost bin. All right. And then on the board, you've got yours with skin on and I've got mine with skin off. So we've got both sorts there. Just so, so everyone can see that one. Um, there's yours. There's mine. Uh, we've got our apple. Now, when our apples are nice, long and thin, we can use the claw. But at the moment, they're not nice, long and thin, so we need to get them. These two are thin, but these two are not. So we need to get these two thin as well. So what we're going to do is bridge again. and I'm going to cut them into three. They do like a railway line through the middle. So there we go, bridging it. And I've cut it into three. So there we go. Now 
Are you doing the same there, Millie? I'll let it wait till you catch up. There we go. So she's cut it into three as well. So you can see now, these pieces are nice, long and thin as well. You see, long and thin, long and thin pieces, long and thin pieces, long and thin pieces. I'm going to do this last one here. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to cut that one up, long and thin. A few lines in there. So we've got them long and thin. So this is practicing all your knife skills and using the knife skills. We need to send hers. Got hers nice, long and thin. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to make this just a little bit thinner, thinner for you as well, Millie. There we go. We've got yours. There we go. How come you've got more apple than me? That's not fair. <laughs> Uh, there we go, nice long thin. Now when you've got nice long thin apples, you can see we've got a whole variety of different shaped long thin apples here. Then uh, we can go in with our claw. This is my claw. Remember that is not a claw. Get that thumb away, fingers over the top, create a claw. We're going to rest the knife on the edge of our, and we're going to cut on the edge of our knuckle, the blunt side, and we're going to cut away from ourselves. We'll put the food underneath my knuckle and we're going to cut away. So let me do my first one. Let's move all these out of the way so everyone can see what I'm doing. First claw. So if you can see that piece there, there it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my claw, no thumb, and it thumbs inside, claw on the top, and I'm going to rest down and I'm going to start to chop the ends of my long pieces so they're tiny, tiny, small. Okay. Please do the same now. That's it. Keep moving your hand back slowly as you're doing it. Slicing away. There we go. That's it. Slice it. Thumb, 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 thumb. Remember your thumb inside. Slice it backwards and forwards if you want to. There we go. Okay. Right. So we got some nice chunks there. Do you want to do it again? You want to use one of my bits there? Yeah. Do up. So thumb inside, fingers over the top, resting the knife against you. Keep easing back. There we go. And you'll get more and more confident at this one. OK, so we've got some more. Here we go, Millie. Let's just keep showing everybody on the camera what we're doing here. So claw, keep moving that claw back. There we go. Keep moving it back and perfect. And we'll move those night and we'll keep doing it. Now, what we're going to be doing here is we are making these pieces um, into a particular shape. OK, um, you keep going with that, Millie. It's doing a great job. We're making these into a particular type of shape we've got going on here. Let me grab one of these so I can show you. Now, um, what the shape is, let's go with some, some mats here and some shape, shapes here. Um, we have made something that has got, if you can see that on the camera, uh, four sides, okay? It's got a four-sided square piece. Um, what is a four-sided square, uh, Millie, like that? What would that be if you had dots on it? A dice. A dice. So we are dicing um, up our apple here making it teeny tiny small, dicing all those pieces up into our, so we've got a nice collection of small diced up bits of apple. Okay, and we're practicing our knife skills as we do that one. So Millie's just doing her, her claw there to cut these up really small and make them into our dice. Okay. Get these into a bowl, I think. Here we go. So if you can see all these in the bowl there on the camera, we've got our nice bits of apple in there, nicely chopped up. Lots and lots of chopped up apple. Some with the skin on, some with the skin off. It's up to your preference on that. Um, with the skin on, obviously you can get more fibre in them. There's more nutrients in that. You're going to be good for you. Um, fibre is a good thing to keep you uh, your digestive system moving. OK, so we need the right sort of fibres in our body to keep our body's uh, uh, digestion moving, keep everything that goes into our mouths doing good and coming and going through our body in the right way. All right, well done, year seven. To be doing this at home, that's uh, good. Let's have a look and see if we've got any more questions there. Um, you can say you can do the same way. Bridge claw, bridge claw. Is that a bridge or a claw? What are we doing now? The long and thin? Yeah, claw. There we go. Now I'm going to then show you how you can do that with a fork. If you're if you're feeling a bit uncomfortable with that, I mean, that's good. I'm going to show you how you can do this with a fork. So um, let me grab a piece. We we'll use that one there. So um, uh, let's have a look. Let's pretend um, I need to do a bridge and a claw with this piece here of apple. So first of all, my bridge. 
I can use this one, I can go through and I can cut through like this and I can cut through like that. Oh, I don't have to get my fingers right close. And if I want to, I can move that fork along and I can use it as a bridge again. Bridge, bridge, move my fork along. Bridge, bridge, bridge. Now look at that. I have got lots of lovely even um, lengths there. They've got lots and lots of um, long pieces. Now, because I've got long pieces, I can then go in with the claw. So I use the fork as a claw now. Um, so let's uh, let's use that. Put my fork in there as a claw. Move these other pieces out of the way, and I can go and cut against my fork. Okay, so I can still end up with my lovely chunks of apple there, but this time I'm using a fork to do it. Lots of apple. Millie, there seems to be some apple in your mouth as well. No, 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 no apple in your mouth. Okay, so we've got a whole bowl full of chopped up apple there, which is lovely. You can see there we've got lots of it and hopefully you've got some lovely sliced, uh, sliced and diced um, apple in there as well. Slicing and dicing using our, what's that Millie? What's that, Millie? Claw. What's that, Millie? Neither. Neither. Neither a bridge nor a claw. Hopefully you've got the same there as well. So we have now got our bridge and claw sorted out. We have got our apple. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's go back to our content here on the recipe so you can see where we're up to. OK, um, so you can see now on the recipe card there, we have made our pastry, which is now just chilling for a minute. We've just got to number five there and we have made chopped up some apple in there, a bit like number eight. But what you'll see we're missing there is our apple berry. Now, this again is going to be a bit, a bit tricky, given the situation that we've got at the moment with um, regards to uh, our lockdown larders, as we'll call them. Uh, lockdown larders in so much as you may not have all the ingredients at home or you might find it very hard to get all of the ingredients. We have. Um, we have found it quite hard to get the ingredients. But what we can use instead of this is we can use some tinned fruit. So we've got some uh, tinned fruit there, um, tinned summer fruits. You can see that one on the screen there. This will do fine. We're going to we can use that. We can use frozen frozen summer fruits there. So we've got some frozen summer fruits there. That will do absolutely fine. We've even got some frozen, uh, we've got some frozen black currants there. Um, now, ideally, um, we've actually run out of ours now, but ideally what you can do is obviously freeze your um, blackberries when it gets towards the autumn, freeze a big bag of them, keep them in the freezer and you can use those for this one. That'll be absolutely fine. So um, we've got some more messages coming in. Let's have a look at there. Yes, uh, is, is it as good to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is absolutely as good as to use frozen as it is fresh. Um, uh, fresh fruit is doesn't matter. Um, you can use uh, uh, any kind of uh, fruits with this one. And if you if you really can't get hold of any uh, frozen or cans, uh, we've got say we've got. We got both here, um, types of fruit to put them in there. Yeah, some of you might have to get them got fresh. Fabulous. Um, we, we're in lockdown in our house. We've been since Wednesday, so uh, we haven't got any fresh fruit in our house. Um, and we're not expecting a delivery for a, a few days yet. Um, we have got one, but we're not. Really, so we're going to we, we're going to use um, some of these. That's fine. Um, they are as good freshness wise as if they have been picked because what you're doing is they're freezing them or canning them um, very quickly after they've been uh, picked. So you're sealing all that goodness into them. So yes, the answer to that question there is, are they as good? Yes, they are. Now someone else has just come in. Um, is there anything I can use instead? Um, OK, so yeah, um, so you, you can use um, you can use some dried fruits. So if you've got some raisins or sultanas, they will go nicely in there. You can put those into there as well. Um, and it's now saying, what if we didn't have able to get out of any apples and what can we use for our casing? So if you've not been able to get hold of any apples at all or pears and you still want to make this fruit pie, um, that's fine. Um, you can make it so that we don't put the apple shell. We will make a pastry shell instead. So we'll use the short cross pastry. I'll show you how to do both in a moment. You can make the shell out of pastry or you can make the shell out of an apple or pear. Um, doesn't matter. 
it's absolutely fine. It'll still taste absolutely amazing. Um, and we're going to put, show you both methods. All right. We just want to work with what ingredients you've got at home. We want to work with what ingredients you've got in your lockdown larder. OK, um, we're all at home uh, now, so we need to just work with what we've got or what we can get hold of. But we still want to be able to show us cookery skills. We still want to have a teaching lesson. We still want to be able to eat something that's really delicious and nutritious and good for us uh, from a health point of view. Any more questions? No, good. Right. So I think we should use some frozen strawberries. We're using yeah. frozen strawberries. Um, so we're going to use some uh, frozen strawberries there. I'm going to plonk some of those in there. Do you want to get, oh, I've got strawberries all over my fingers. Do you want to get a spoon out there? And we'll spoon some of the strawberries into there as well. Perfect. And some of the berries into there. Can you get some of the berries in there as well? Oh, oops, it's all coming out the bottom. There we go. There we go. And some berries in there. Looks like we've just got a little hole in there. Yeah, a big spoonful of that. Go and put a big spoonful of that in there. Fabulous. Um, so another one more spoonful, I reckon I'll do it. Oh, OK, brilliant. All right. Um, so what we've got here is we have got oops, bring the camera down. So we have now got a combination of apples and berries. Hence the reason why we call this one apple berry pie. Uh, OK, Millie, yeah. what I like to do now is stir that all up OK, without getting any on the work surface. <laughs> do you want a larger bowl? Yeah. They get a larger bowl. Should we use the, the should we go and, uh, I tell you what, use the very big one. Do you want to use the very big one? Put the bags over here. We'll take those ones and you can use the really big bowl. OK, so we, we're going to put the uh, apples and the berries into a really, really big bowl. Well, I'm not, Millie is. Now, why is this really cool? Well, I think it's really cool because you're now going to turn the apples a completely different colour. OK, those apples or pears that you're using that were uh, like a whitey, yellowy, creamy colour are now turning what colour, Millie? Pink. They are turning pink. We are going to turn your fruit absolutely pink. We want to mush up all those berries inside. Can we mush all the berries inside that? Uh, squish and squash them. Squish and squash them up. In fact, if you want to, we can just squash them because they're not fresh. We'll just squash those things up. There we go. And we'll just mash them up. You can use a fork in there. I'm going to get in there and mash it up. Have some fun with this one. We're going to melt whatever fruits we've got in there. And say if you've got dried fruits, dried fruits will go in this one with uh, apple or pear really nicely. If you think about a Christmas mince pie, that's often got dried fruits in there and that's beautiful. OK, we're just chopping this up. We're, just, we're having a fun, lot of fun here, mashing up everything into tiny little bits. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're going to just carry on mashing all of those fruits in there. So we've got a beautiful pink mix. Is that a beautiful pink mix now? Yeah. Shall we show the camera? A lot of fun there. There we go. You've got a beautiful pink mix going on inside there now. All right, so we now look a little bit like, um, let's, let's do that one. I just get that back onto the screen for you. Uh, so we've now got on the screen there the recipe and you can see there. There we go. You can see there we have now chopped strawberries, diced up apples. Now it does say add a teaspoon of corn flour. OK, um, it does say that on there now. Some people haven't got corn flour. That is absolutely fine. Um, don't worry about it if you haven't got any corn flour. Um, that, that don't, you don't need to worry about that at all. We can add some other things instead. Um, and I'm going to show you what we can do there. Let's go back to me. OK, it's just going back. Sorry. Go back to us. All right. Um, so we we're nearly there with our mix, but we need to we're going to do some more things. So corn flour. If you haven't got corn flour, um, we have got some uh, some custard powder um, that would work for us as well. So you want to get a teaspoon of this minute. And I'm going to let you put that one into there. And the other thing that is really, really good into this one, especially if you can't if you haven't got corn flour. Um, so you haven't got sorry, uh, custard powder and you're just using corn flour. Something else that really makes this one. Can I have another teaspoon there? Can you grab me a teaspoon? Yeah. Uh, and something else that we could use is, uh, which we're going to put into there, is going to be some vanilla. OK, now this is beautiful stuff. I'm just squeezing this one out. This is vanilla. OK, now this is a vanilla bean paste. There we go. There we go. Uh, this is a vanilla bean paste here. We've got a little vanilla bean paste there. 
um, which we're going to pour in. Now you should be going with something like a vanilla bean paste. There's lots on the market there. Um, the little pod one is uh, an absolutely beautiful uh, tube, metal tube one, which is a really lovely one you can get on the market at the moment. Um, there's some other ones out there in the market, but you want to go with real vanilla. Okay, real vanilla is a much, much better um, uh, flavor and much, much better consistency. It's just dropping in there, there we go. Um, this is it. Um, this, if you can get it, this is the stuff you want to try and get. It's beautiful. You can see the seeds inside. Um, uh, if you can see that on the camera, you can actually see the seeds inside this paste. It is a beautiful uh, vanilla paste that's going on there. Um, try it. If you haven't got vanilla paste, um, you could put some vanilla extract in there. I know people, like I say, obviously it's hard to get hold of everything at the moment. Um, uh, vanilla extract will do. Do not go with a vanilla flavouring. It's not very nice stuff. It's uh, I'd stay well clear of it if you can. I mean, if that's all we've got, that's all we've got. But if you've got your chance, um, vanilla paste or a vanilla extract, um, because the, uh, the other stuff's like artificial. Um, it's, it's horrible. It's made with an artificial uh, stuff, um, a bit like a petrochemical, you know, the sort of stuff. They want to be putting petrol in your food. Um, it's, it's a flavouring that's not particularly um, good for you and nice for you. You want to use a really good stuff. Real vanilla has got so many good things for you going on in it. So highly recommend it if you can. And it's black. It's not the uh, not yellow. It's, you see the black seeds in it. It's beautiful stuff. So yeah, there's some good ones in it. So, so would you recommend? Yes, I, I would recommend Little Pods um, vanilla if you can. It's a lovely paste, but there's lots of other pastes out there on the market if you wanted to, if you can't get hold of that one and you've only got that at home. But a bit of vanilla in there, um, corn flour or custard powder in there. Um, we're going to stir all that up. And you should start to smell. Oh, it smells good. Can you get your head in there, Millie? Really? Have a smell of that. Does that smell good? Yeah. That smells good. We are nearly at the ready. We've done our pastry. We've done our fruit. Um, we're now going to put it all together. Now, for some of you, that means we use putting it inside an apple or a cooking apple or a pear or an eating apple. And for some of you, that just means we're going to put it inside the pastry case, which is fine. Um, this is all about looking at skills of making pastry and cutting fruit. Um, how you put it together is up to you. We're, we're, we're not in school now. I'm gonna, we want to be adventurous and we want to have a play with this one. Uh, any more questions there? Uh, no? We can, yep, there, someone else is going to be making their case shell and putting all of it in there. Right, this is now a beautiful dark, ready pink colour. Um, you can't quite see that on the camera there. Let me just try and see there. Yeah, uh, there we are. Beautiful, ready pink. Oh, yeah, it's better. I can sort of see it there now. Um, on into there. Um, we have got our pastry, so we're now going to combine all of those together. All right, so let's put that. Yeah, if you want to go get the pastry out, out of the fridge, which has been chilling, that would be perfect. And we're going to be putting these all together. Now we can do this in a few different ways. So before we roll that one out, Millie, I just want to show you, if you are, we're going to try it in a few different ways as well. So we've got um, we've got some eating apples, which are going to work in a, in a, um, a, to go with our original idea, which is to actually put this inside an apple, which is lovely. I'm taking all these wonderful stickers off. Um, here we go. So we are um, using obviously British there. We, you, know, you can see those there, British ones. Uh, all good. Now what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to hold the apple. Do you want to just move the camera down, Millie? I'm going to hold the apple. If you're doing this work, I'm going to do it as a bridge. I'm going to hold it on its side. Not like we said originally, I'm going to hold it on my side. So I'm putting my finger and thumb between the stalk and the base of the apple, and I'm going to cut through this way. Now, there we go. Uh, inside here should be something that says something about what you've been doing today. OK, because you at home da, 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 are all star bakers. Da, da, and there's my star. Um, there we go. Um, star. And if you are doing this, I mean, you're doing this inside an apple. I'm just doing this inside, inside an eating apple. If you've got cooking apples, brilliant. Um, I could, we can get hold of any. So we're just using an eating apple. That'll be fine. So what you do now with a little teaspoon, we are going to go digging like you're on the beach. So we're going to get a spoon. And we're going to do tiny little turns. I'm holding my spoon wrong. I'm putting my thumb inside my spoon like that. And I'm going to use it like a little spade on the beach. I'm doing little circles like that all the way round. And as I go round like this, I am scooping out the centre of my apple. OK, so I'm just scooping out the centre of my apple here. Do you want to have a go, Millie? Yeah. Uh, there we are, the spoon for you there. So we're just going to scoop out the centres of our apple. This is just little bits of circles at a time. If you can see what I'm doing there on the screen. There we go. I'm just scooping out little bits at a time and just doing tiny little bits 
So with my thumb inside there, I'm using it as a little spade and I'm just going to scoop out. Now, if you go through the skin of this, the apple, don't worry, that's absolutely fine. But I'm just going to try and scoop out, try and not go right to the edges. So try and put your thumb in there, just go stay start in the middle and not go all the way to the edges. It's a tricky part. Now, if you haven't got it cooking apples or apples or pears, you could do this with a pear as well and you can't scoop out the centre. So if you can just see there, you might be able to see I've scooped out the centre now. Can you see that one? That should form my um, pastry case. I'm just going to do a little bit more scooping just so you can see that one as well. There we go. Scooping, 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 scooping. OK, I have scooped out the centre of my apple. There we go. Um, all scooped out inside. Get a little bit more up there. Doesn't... I think I'm done there. I think I'm done. Scooped out. How about you? Should we have a go with yours? Yeah. Now, all those little bits that we scooped out, we're going to throw into our big bowl. Do you want to put all those, all those little bits there into the big bowl? So we're not going to waste any of this apple. We're going to put it back into our filling, OK? So we're going to mix it with our wonderful berries and we're going to mix it with our chopped apple and we're going to mix it with our vanilla and we're going to mix it with our corn flour or custard powder if you haven't got corn flour. If you haven't got custard powder or corn flour, yes, good question. Um, a little bit of standard flour will do the trick. We'll stir that one in um, and when it cooks off, that flour will do something we call gelatinize and with the sauce, the uh, liquids that are with the apple and that will work as well. Um, but yeah, um, ideally corn flour or um, a little bit of uh, custard powder would, would work better. But yes, you can use um, just a plain flour in there as well. All right, so we now have um, two of our shells, um, which have got scooped out apples, you see there, two shells there. And we're going to be putting our pie filling in there for one version. And then another version, we'll just do it with our normal pie filling. Right, I think, Millie, we are nearly ready to get all of our um, pastry and get it all ready to, to, to roll out again. Let's uh, just get our piece there, so work surface sorted out. OK, um, there we go. So we're just going to clean down our flour. We're just cleaning down the work surface between working here. So we can get ready for our rolling pins. Now we're going to use a rolling pin. I've had a message saying we don't have a rolling pin at home. That is fine. So we've got an alternative with all of those things. I am also got a milk bottle. Now, obviously, be careful with glass, but this is a milk bottle and it's shiny and it's uh, glossy, which means it, it's, it's good for rolling things out as well. So if you've got a bottle, uh, an old bottle of glass bottle of uh, pop or you've got a milk bottle, um, that would work to roll it out instead. Be careful, not too much pressure because it is glass, but this is very strong um, to be able to do that. Um, and it will roll it, either either. Um, okay, so we need to put some, a little bit of flour on our work surface. So we'll put a little bit of flour on our work surface and we put some on the rolling pin. There we go, Millie. Let me really show you what she's doing there. There we are, flour everywhere, making a mess. Brilliant, well done, Millie. Well done, well done, well done. Flour, ooh. <laughs> We've lost the end. There we go. Uh, flour everywhere. Right. OK, now I'm going to use my milk bottle for me. Uh, and we're going to need um, to get together uh, some sort of get our paste on there. Okay. We're also going to need to make sure that we've got um, we've got something to cut things out with. Now you can use all sorts of things. We have got uh, pastry cutters. Pardon me, Millie. Um, we've got different sized pastry cutters. Oh, yes, look, there we go. Different sized pastry cutters. Um, if you haven't got a pastry cutter, you could use a cup. It's going to work. It's going to be fine. Um, so we can use those sort of things. Let's use what, what you've got at home. Now, if you look on the board, oh, you can't see. Let me move the camera down a little. Uh, you can see we have got pastry on the board, haven't we, Millie? Yes. And that's been chilling nicely in the bridge. So we're going to roll that one out. Uh, you need to roll that one out to about um, about a pound coin. OK, pound coin thickness. There we go. And we got that rolled out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's going to be our great short cross pastry. Uh, OK, happy with that? Happy with that? And I say if you haven't, we can use our rolling pin, our makeshift rolling pin here. There we go. Uh, we still end up with a beautiful pastry um, on there. So we've got a pastry on there. Now, we need to think about if you're using an apple, there we are, my apple. Um, we need to think about something that's going to cut 
um, a something that's slightly bigger than the apple, right? The same size or slightly bigger. So this one will do for that. So if you want to do two of those, and the good thing with a short crust pastry is you can re-roll it and use up all the extra bits at the end. Unlike the pastry we did yesterday, what was the pastry we did yesterday? You can remember we couldn't re-roll really it. Yeah, rough puff and puff pastry. Can't really do that because it's all laminated. Again, if you want to watch those videos, there are year nine videos. They are on YouTube now. Um, go to the uh, go to the screen where you are watching. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube already, go down to the side and have a look at the re most recent uploaded. If you are watching this live, you can go to the YouTube channel, which is uh, Fun Kitchen, and it will be on there. Right, so we've got two circles of pastry. Um, OK, so next thing is, let's start scooping our um, mixing. So you've got a big spoon. Okay, that's in there already. So we'll bring our fruit over. OK. Okay, we're going to scoop that in. Beautiful. Push that one in. Wonderful. Okay, so if you can see that on the camera, we have just scooped in our mixture into the top. We are then going to put the pastry onto the top. We're going to hide it in there. And we're just going to press it all the way down. And that is our first pie. It's all squeezing out the side. That's beautiful. I love it. Look, all red fingers. Uh, there we go. So we have got the first of our pies. Ah, oh, have you got a tray? Perfect, Millie. Well done. We're going to put that inside the tray just like that. Okay, should we do the other one? Do you want to do the other one, Millie? Yeah. Okay, there we go, Millie. Over to you. Wonderful. Okay. Lid on, Millie. Wonderful. And we're going to put that one back into the tray. If you pass the tray over so you can see what they're, what you're doing there. And we're just going to put that one into there. Now, fabulous. Let's go and put that one back. Now, you might be thinking, well, I haven't got a, I haven't got an apple to be able to do that with. Um, that's fine. So what we can do there is we can um, make up some pies. So if you've got a larger cutter or um, a cup, either either, um, we can do because they're about the same sort of size. Um, we can do the same sort of thing. So if you want to do do that, to cut one large one out of that. So Minnie is just going to use, literally just, oh yeah, you don't need, do you want to use a knife? Or are you just going to, no? So no need for a knife on that one. There we go. You got a circle. Pump it out. Yeah. Okay, bring the tray over, Millie. Now, with this one, we're going to be putting the um, pastry straight into the tray. So we need to just get a little bit of uh, grease on there. So if you can just get a little bit of the butter on there, yeah. I'll just get you. There we go. Take a little bit of that. So Millie is just going to grease the tin. That's it. Rub it with butter. There we go. All the way around the outside. Can you see that one, everybody? She's just putting that one. Wonderful, Millie. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we'll just I'll just do the other one as well. There we go. All in there. Lots of lovely butter in there. All right, now, once we've done that, we're going to get our, you can see it's all greased in there. We're going to get that circle that you just cut out using a teacup. There we go. Put that into there. And we're just going to push that one in. Fabulous. Can I put some of your filling in? Wonderful. Oh, you can't quite see that one. Okay. There we go. Okay. Fabulous. Now we're going to just ease those edges up and we'll just put another little round circle on top. So there we go. Stop. There we go. So we've now got um, in there, we're just going to put another piece of, you could just leave it open if you wanted to, but what we're going to do is going to cut out a little circle there. And there we go. And put that one on the top. There we go. So you don't need the apple on there, we can do we can do it this way if you wanted to, and you can have a solid one there. Now, the final thing we're going to do, we're going to brush this one um, with a little bit of something to make it all glossy and fine. Now, we're going to make some more of these ones, but for the moment, we'll just show you what we're going to how we're going to finish these ones off. So, um, we just need to get a little bit of milk. Do you want to get a little bit of milk out? Yeah. 
OK, so we're going to pour a little bit of uh, milk, just a little bit of milk into the this cup. That's it. That's perfect. Put that milk just on the side over there. Yeah. Um, now you can use a pastry brush or if you've not got a pastry brush, you can use your fingers. All right, get your fingers in there, Millie. Uh, is it really, really cold? There we are. Now what's going to happen is you're just going to brush the tops of our pies with a little bit of milk on the top there. Wonderful, beautiful. Now at home, um, you think about how many fruit and veg you're supposed to be having a day and it, it's, it's even more important that we still keep to these thing, these different routines, even though we're at home and we're not doing normal things at the moment and our lives are all adapting. But it's really important that you're still exercising, you're still eating healthily. So we've got a few of your five a day in this already. So it's not only going to be a beautiful, tasty bite, but you're also going to get some of your five a day in there as well as good cooking skills today. We've got loads going on, right? So we're going to carry on doing that for to, to doing that ourselves. We'll just put that on the side there, Millie. Um, uh, I'll go. I'll just shoot back to the recipe for you. Here we go. So you'll see now, if you're looking at the recipe, that we have now got. Oops, yeah. Um, we can see now that we have got on the recipe there, we've gone through making our uh, individual bits of pastry, which is the first time you've made a pastry. So for some of you, that's brilliant. Um, so we've made the pastry, all those, those lovely steps from our one through to six. We're rolling it out at the moment. You sliced and scooped out a cooking apple, or if you haven't, or a pear, or if you haven't done that, you just put in some pastry at the bottom of it. We've hulled or chopped up some strawberries, diced up the apple, we put some corn flour or custard powder in there, a little bit of vanilla in there, and we put those on the top. Now the final thing you can see when we put the pie crust discs on the top is we need to get some ventilation over there. Um, so you can, if you get yourself uh, either a little knife if you wanted to do that, that's absolutely fine. Or what we tend to like to do is to get um, uh, we'll get one of those, that's fine, put the rest of it. Um, we can use one of these. Let's, uh, <coughs> you want to get the metal one from the um, yeah. fridge one? Um, we get this. Uh, let's get that. Sorry, we're just uh, making more pies as you look at this. Let's get back to it. All right, um, so while you're doing that, we've just been rolling out some more pies here. Um, and we're now going to make a ventilation hole at the top. Now you can use, to do the ventilation, you can use a little knife. Uh, um, or if you want to, we're going to use straws. I'm going to grab that from Millie. There we go. Um, while she's making more of those. So get a little straw and uh, we've got recyclable metal straws here. If you haven't got straws, then you can always just use a knife to make a little hole in there. And we're going to make a little pattern. These are little holes in the top. And that will let the steam out from all the liquids that are in there. There we go. We're going to make some more holes in there. Make them look a bit more professional as well. If you wanted to, you could decorate these by if you've got any extra pastry of cutting out some leaves, and you can put those on there. There we are. If you can see those on the screen there. So I made some little ventilation holes in there using my straw, got the recycled metal straw here, and we're just going to um, make those little holes in the top. Um, to make our pastry, which is all glazed as well. Um, right, any more questions? Loads of questions, loads of questions. So while Millie finishes off making the rest of those pies, I'm going to carry on going through some of these questions. So let me scroll through. Uh, what if we, uh, if we can't get the food um, for future lessons? Um, don't worry, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to email uh, if you're my class here just ask if I can, can't get hold of foods because of uh, what's going on at the moment and your lockdown larder is starting to get a little bit uh, a little bit sparse. I'm going to email you class in advance uh, a recipe. You tell me if you've not got any ingredients and I will adapt the recipes so we can uh, go with everybody to what you've got already in your larder. OK, so don't worry about that if you haven't got anything. Um, how do you cut the strawberries? OK, so I have just used a butter knife when we would cut those and put them in our bowl. Uh, whoa, someone's got fresh strawberries. Congratulations to you. Uh, how do you cut the strawberries? So let me just uh, got another one here. How do we cut the strawberries? Can you put plums in them? Beautiful. Yes, you can put plums in them. Um, I'm going to make the pastry case instead of the apple case. That's fine. Well, we've used both of them here. You can just see Millie, she's just putting together another a pastry one instead of an apple one. So we've got a combination of the two here. She's just making up some more of them. So that's don't worry about that. 
what shall I use to scoop? So um, we've used a teaspoon, OK? So what we did was we just literally just went um, went with a wood teaspoon like that to scoop them out. And you get your apple and you literally just scoop out the centre. So if you've got your half apple, let me just go through that one again. So you've got your half apple, you just put your thumb inside the spoon like that and we're going to turn it and scoop it. OK, so turning it and scooping it. But that's a really good question. And each time you turn and scoop it, you'll get a little piece out. Go little and little bits at a time. That'll be much better for it than rather than having to do the whole lot at the same time. Uh, next question. Um, we got lots more questions going in down here. Uh, did a little, uh, oh, yeah, there's another one about the apple cases and pastry cases instead. That's fine. Happy for you to be doing that instead. Um, we can do with that one. I'm just looking at the time there for your lesson. Um, so we have done both of those. Now, I did say that we very quickly will have a look at doing maybe doing some. Oh, can you get one on top? You know, I can leave that one open. Yeah. OK, um, so we're going to very quickly look at how to make an apple swan. We've got very little. We've got a little bit of time left over. We're just going to just before the lesson ends, we're going to quickly show you how to make an apple swan if you've not made one of those before. Now, um, this is going out to across the across the world. Let's say across the country, these lessons across the world, which is fantastic. Um, this is a, this next bit's actually come from another food teacher, um, which I, I, I thank thank for them from from Food Teacher Centre, which is our group of food teachers around the around the world. Um, um, I'm uh, going to just very quickly uh, go very quickly go back to the cards. I'm going to just very quickly show you how you can do this one. So. Uh, if you have apples left over, this is a way of making an apple swan. Um, let me just get that one on the screen for you there. Send live. Um, this is a way of making an apple swan. OK, um, it's it's a it's a very interesting thing. It would be nice to think you could have a go with it. Um, so what you do is you use any spare apples that you might have, or you could try with the person. So somebody's doing it with a pair. That's fine. And we can cut and slice and practice your apple skills a little bit more at trying to make something that is very interesting and looks quite pretty. Um, I, we did this with some of the other year sevens and they really enjoyed it. And lots of year sevens across the country are doing this one at the moment. It's a nice way of practicing your apple, practicing your cutting skills and getting some nutritious food into you. So um, I'm going to very quickly show you how to do this one as a like sort of an ending little bit on your knife skills. OK, I'm going to just show you how to very quickly make an apple swan. Uh, and then we'll be end of the lesson. So while I do this, if you have any final questions about what we've done already, um, that would be great. Um, I'll post them on the side and I will try and answer them for you. Um, so let's go back to me and I will show you how to very quickly do these ones. OK. <clears throat> All right. Let's show you how to very quickly make an apple swan. If you want to have a, if you've done all of that and you want to have practice on doing something else, we're going to get one more apple out, Millie. Is that we can get me one more apple? Yeah. Perfect. Um, let's get our screen down so you can see. Now with this apple, we're going to cut the apple on um, an odd shape. We're going to cut it on the diagonal, but we're going to use what shape is that, Millie? What's what cutting technique? Bridge. Bridge. We're going to use a bridge. We're going to cut it on the diagonal and make a bridge. Okay. Now, at this point, we have got two halves of apple on the squiff. Uh, what we're going to do now is we are now going to use our bridge again, and we're going to make um, one side and we're going to make the other side. So we'll choose that one, I think, that's slightly larger. What you can use is if you've got two butter knives, can you just grab another butter knife there? Yeah. Um, oh, it's here, it's here, it's yeah. right. You can use two butter knives as a guide. And what we're going to do is going to use a bridge. I'm going to cut down one side of the stalk, but I'm not going to go all the way to the base. I'm going to go just, let's move those. Around. I'm just going to go to down to the lowest point possible I can on my bridge. There we go. I'm going to do the same on the other side of the stalk. We go down to the lowest point I can without it breaking. And I put the knives there just to stop me from going all the way down to the board in case I slip. OK, now the next thing is I'm going to do a claw and I'm going to go down across the other way. There we go. And uh, just so that those two things meet up very gently and I've now taken that piece out. You can see that one. Um, I'm just going to move that one a little bit closer. There we go. So what I've done is I've taken out one section and just moved it slightly across there. I'm going to do the same on the other side where I've gone down. 
You see where I've gone down there? I'm now going to use a claw and I'm going to go slicing across. There we go. Slicing, 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 and just taking that one out. All right. So I've now got it on both sides with uh, these pieces pushing out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces off completely. And I'm going to do the same with these pieces again on my board. So I'm going to start with a bridge. I'm going to go down as far as I can, but stop at the stop at when it gets towards the table. And I'm using my knives to stop me getting all the way to the bottom. Then a claw the other way. Maybe you can stop putting these together in a minute. OK, I'm just going to ease that one out. So what I've done there is I'm now going to, have to do both sides and I can ease that one out. OK, I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm going to do bridge. And I'm going to do claw. And pull that one out. And you can keep doing this um, and make it even finer still. If I put those ones back into my back into my and starting to take shape now as my swan, then we need to make a head. So bridge, bridge, down the center piece where the core was, claw. And then we're going to take that out. OK, so this is where the neck's going to go in. And then finally, we need to put the head and the neck. So I'm just going to slice a piece of the other side. And I'm going to make this into my head. I'm going to do a knife. You can have a go at being having a bit of fun with this one. See what, what swans you can make. There's lots online about making these ones and I'll put the post that up there as well. So you can see that again. OK, so I've got my little swan's head. I'm going to put my swan's head inside. Get the hole slightly too big there. OK, I have got my little swan. OK, I'll just hold that up to the camera. Oops, dropped ahead. <laughs> Let me put that one in. A very little swan. There we go. Little swan. If you want to have a go at making that one, I'll put the screen on there. If you've got any spare apples and you want to have a play with that. Um, you can brush that with a bit of lemon juice to stop that going brown and my little swan going across there. Um, OK, while I've been doing that, Millie has been finishing off the pies. We've got an open pie. We've got a covered pie with a pastry, both a pastry base, pastry base, apple berry pie with the apples in, the apple berry pie with the apples in. We're going to cook these off. You need to cook these off for about 20 to 30 minutes in the oven. Um, as it's in the uh, there, let me just get the final bit of the up on your screen for you. Um, make sure the oven is preheated. Thank you, Millie. Yes, make sure that the oven is preheated before you put it in there. Um, the preheat. Oops, there we go. I'm just putting this back on the screen for everybody. There we go. Um, you need to make sure the oven is preheated to 190 gas mark five, and you need to put these in the oven for about 30 minutes. Um, when you can either brush them with egg or milk if you wanted to do that before they get into the oven while you're waiting for the oven to preheat it like we did too. Thank you for reminding me on that one, Millie. So uh, get those ones into there as well. OK, girl, it, girls, that looks like we are up for the lesson there. Um, let me go back to me. Um, let's see if we've got any more questions. No, nope, it looks like we are done on the questions there. So uh, that's a big thank you for your double lesson there. You'll be able to watch this again um, either through Teams or back onto YouTube. Um, that will be fine. Um, so it's a, it's a thank you from me, uh, Mr. Matt. Thank you. And a thank you from Millie as well. And we will see you again soon. Be, take care. Be good.
take be safe okay look after yourselves look out for other people at these difficult times uh, and i'll see you again soon thank you very much everybody goodbye